Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Big League Breakdowns. We are here today to discuss the Luis Arise trade from the Marlins to the Padres in exchange for some prospects, what it means for both teams, and a little bit of Miami Marlins talk as they've had a very, very, very rough season to this point. Uh, myself, Tyler, John, and Will here tonight talking about this. And, gentlemen, I, I think this trade happened pretty early into the season. The Miami Marlins were a playoff team last year. We expected them to, you know, maybe take a step back but still be in the hunt. But they have really, really struggled out of the gates, and they're already looking to sell. Uh, they traded Luis Arise to the Padres for a plethora of prospects, um, four in total. And, yeah, it, it is a pretty pretty big trade in the grand scheme of things. Will, I'll go to you first. What do you make of the deal for both of these teams? Padres, it's huge. Having someone like that at the top of their lineup. I mean, heck, I think any contender would love to have Luis Arise on their team in some capacity. But as for the Marlins, yeah, I know you guys are, like, worse than dog shit right now but come on you're gonna throw in the towel a month into the season like the division's not that tough behind if you're trying to overcome the nationals and the mets like let's be honest between those two teams yeah it's easy enough to have enough of a start to go over them and be enough in the playoff competition i mean they're not going for the division <laughs> but to basically be like all right uh we won what nine games in the first month screw this we're dumping our best players and go sit mimosas on the beach or something i don't know i i mean we usually see i i feel like we don't see big trades like this until like june july right like when you get into that part of the season where you know kind of what your fate is going to be like bro they literally traded him the first week of may like that's crazy that's your best player right there and a guy who won the batting title last year and took you to the playoffs. And they're like, nah, like we're, we're kind of over this. We suck. Uh, this is over. Um, John, I think for the Padres, this is a nice piece. Like they have a lot of those like home run threats or big hitter threats. And a guy like this who, first of all, lefty bat who can get on base. I think it's really good for them. Yeah. 100%. This is how, uh, this is a move that helps the, uh, Padres really get better. Uh, definitely this is a lineup that can, can hit, uh, that can field, uh, has two definite stars, uh, in Manny Machado and, uh, Fernando Tatis and adding, uh, Luis Arise, um, with his statistics of batting, uh, 312 currently, uh, on base percentage of 361 and then, his uh, uh, hit total of 49 with nine doubles and uh, one triple. No home runs yet, but, you know, the season is still young. Well, he's so. he's also not a home run hitter, too. Like, he's he's one of the best, to bat, best ball to bat players in the league, and I think that's what the Padres are looking for. Uh, somebody that can get on base, and then you can have Machado and, and Tatis come up and drive him in and – yeah, as you said, I think it's a really good deal for them, honestly. Um, right, I think definitely getting a guy on base where you can knock him in uh, in front of like a Manny Machado who can be a power hitter when he when he wants to be uh, is definitely a benefit for for that team. And again, the the haul for the Marlins is actually okay, like. So I feel like there's kind of two approaches when you take when you make these trades when you trade like your star players or upper echelon players it's like you kind of trade for a prospect that you bank on you know one really good prospect that you bank on that's going to be like a surefire at least MLB player they took the route of let's get a couple guys who are still pretty good like prospect wise but let's just get a bunch from see who pans out. They get Dylan Head from the Marlins, who was their number five prospect. Um, they get Jacob Marcy, who was a 10 prospect for the Marlins, um, or for the Marlins now, excuse me. Nathan uh, Martarella, who's the 11th prospect. And they also got a pitcher who I don't know where he's at as well. But like, so, they're, you know, they're getting some guys who maybe they pan out. Um, Dylan Head, I know for a while, I want to say he was a 
first round draft pick at some point. I could be wrong about that, but uh, he he was he was up there, and I remember him being talked about a little bit. So there is some potential there, but I, I think the big kind of point we want to bring up with this with this video is, I mean, the Marlins really fall from grace from last year. The Marlins really the last decade have have had obviously their ups and downs and more downs than than ups, but last year they make the playoffs. Uh, I think it was at 84 wins. They just got in, and, I mean, now you're just looking at them. They cannot seem to put it together. Like, what? I, I don't even remember. What What do they start? Like, 0-11, 0-12 or something? Like, it was it was really bad. But, Will, I mean, from your standpoint, what has gone wrong in Miami? And, like, do you think this was the right move for them? First answer, one question for me that I'm forgetting is Louisa Rice currently under a contract still? Yes. When he was but, traded, or is he due to be a free agent? So he's due to be a free – I think he's due to be a free agent after this season. The Marlins are eating this contract, though. Um, not that it really matters in mm -hmm. baseball, but they're, they're actually paying, like, legit most of it. So uh, I believe it's just one – yeah, one year left on that. I mean, the Marlins were in a bad situation to begin the season because they basically lost all their pitching which was their strength. So that was a huge uh, shot in the foot to begin the season. And then no one seemed motivated when the season started to be like, well, we're going to still work with what we got. It seemed like, well, we're dead. We might as well just, you know, quit now, joy while we can. And it's just, I, but if you look at the off season, even, what did the front office do, if anything, yeah. to show signs that they were willing to, you know, work on the team that was a playoff team last year? They did nothing. Your GM walks. It took forever to find a replacement. And your manager, who was, I believe, what, manager of the year last year, or at least yeah. the top three finalist, is not going to return after this year. You declined his <laughs> option. Which that happened like two weeks into the season. <laughs> right. And Joe... I mean, that's... Too. Way back when Joe Girardi was managing for the very first time in like 2007 or 6 or whatever, he managed the Marlins. He won manager of the year even though he led the team to a losing record. And they fired him after that season. Yeah. Like, this isn't a new thing for them, but you... How do you want a fan base if every time you show signs of life, you literally throw the team away and we're like, well, that didn't work. Start over. Yeah. They're the definition of we want results now, and if we don't, you're dead to us. So I, I think there was a good possibility that Arise was going to get traded. I just, like I said, I didn't think it was going to be this early um, because you kind of look at – uh, obviously he's valuable on a lot of teams because he does get on base so much. And also he's a left handed hitting second baseman. And uh, I know he's not great defensively, but like, you know, that, that I think his position as well as again, how, um, how much he's getting on base and stuff. I think it, it puts his value up, but there's probably so many teams in the fight. And I feel like for the Marlins, like, I, if you hold out for like another month and wait to trade him, I honestly think they probably could have got a better haul for him in my opinion, but it's just, it just seems like, as you said, well, it's like, this is not their first rodeo. Um, they trade for this guy. Obviously it was a fantastic trade because he's been producing, but you know, the, the player they originally gave up for him is, is Pablo Lopez, who's one of the better pitchers in the AL. And now they're trading him away and it just feels like they're rebuilding again i'm like if you're a marlins fan like we're we're over this we're ready to be good we thought we were good last year like i don't know yeah. john i mean what are your what are your thoughts on that point of it because it's it's gotta be tough for them my thoughts of it are i don't think that marlins truly have any fans um, <laughs> if we're being honest uh no in all seriousness though i don't understand how you can really it doesn't seem like they have a direction i don't understand how you can run a baseball organization like this as somebody who's who's part of a fan base that just went through a rebuild a successful rebuild we had a goal in mind um to start you know it, this reminds me a little bit of the manny machado trade back in 2018 where honestly we were banking on um I want to say, I don't even remember who 
center fielder was. Uh, oh, yes, I do. Yusniel Diaz, I believe, is, what, is who it was um, in, in 2018. But he was the surefire thing. He was the surefire, uh, you know, center fielder of the future. He'll be um, definitely within the organization, you know, everything. And you know who made the organiz- who made the team? You know who actually came like and was productive for the, the Orioles? Ian Kramer, mm. who is on the pitching staff right now, but like he, he was part of the, he was part of that trade. And so my point is, like you don't know if any of these prospects are going to pan out. And oh yeah, more than likely with it being the Marlins and not having any sort of direction. More than likely, they're not going to, and you're just going to constantly be rebuilding. You know, it it's it they're they're an organization without a direction. Yeah, honestly, and I think you're seeing. Well, I think you're seeing it from the top to bottom too, right? Like you're having a lot of changes up top, and that's affecting it. My question though is like, now when do they stop? Like, I I, I think there's a good possibility they trade Jazz at this point, right? Because like, if you're uh, look, I know he's still young, but he's on his the last year of his deal, so he's gonna want a payday next year. So like. Are they going to – and that's what I'm saying. Like, if they think they're going to suck next year, which they're going to suck if nothing changes, um, I just don't think, like, you're going to keep him around, I guess. Like, I don't – I mean, I think, again, he's 26, but uh, I think he'll want out. So now we'll have to monitor that. But it's just like, if you're the Marlins, like, when do you – like, is this this a full-on rebuild now? Are we, like – are we tearing it down? What are we doing? Because it's like – Okay, that obviously yeah. that's that's the first piece, but you know you got you kind of have to be all in or all out, like in this kind of thing, right? Like I can't, I think like you either. Ha- I kind of hate when teams are like, "Oh, we're retooling, we're, we're retooling." It's like, okay, you're retooling, so you are kind of just like average all the time. Like you need to rebuild to get good, and then if it's not working, you need to like rebuild. Like so, I I think for them, uh, I just don't know. I I don't see where it stops. Will like, what is your thought on that because i think this team could drastically change even by the end of the year the only thing i can think of what they're trying to do is kind of what steve cohen and the mets did last year which is they're just trying to sell productive guys at this point as for the best possible deals they can have an absolute crap team and hopefully in a few years the returns they get can produce a young team that they can hold on to the Marlins baseball op. Was it a uh, Peter Bendix? We said, Oh yeah. The, a, a hall of fame name, Peter Bendix. Yep. Um, he used to be in the race organization. So obviously he has a unique, unique way of trying to assemble a team, or at least his mindset. Yeah. I'm starting to have questions though. Now of people who have left the race system yeah. to try to run teams because The Red Sox former GM or baseball op before Craig Breslow this year was Bloom also a member of the Rays organization before he was on the Red Sox. Yeah, I believe so. So It it seems like there's this sense of, I mean, the Rays obviously have a working formula. It works every year, and this will be the first year maybe if they continue to play 500 ball. It doesn't work in the past, like, decade. But that'll work next every year. time it seems like someone that leaves that front office for some reason when they get new responsibilities they just fall apart <laughs> they have absolutely no success wherever they go i don't know if it's just they don't understand the system pro- properly if it's that they're trying to take what they did and form it into their own unique way and it just is terrible that they're even trying to change the system i don't I just believe that the um, Bendix was just trying to jump on what he thought was a good trade for a rise. He claimed that he doesn't think he's going to get a better offer or would yeah. not have gotten a better offer if he held out. I find that bull because yeah. if a rise is – unless he gets hurt, and that's the one thing I can think of is with the whole, all injuries, regardless of pitcher or not pitcher, he got scared that a rise would get hurt and couldn't trade him. There's going to be teams – in the middle of summer that are going to want to bat like his at their contenders. He could have absolutely gotten a better trade in the end. 
still might pan out in the end. I have a feeling he's probably going to try to wait out for Jazz Chisholm for that reason now. He yeah. kind of at least sold someone now and got a haul that at least he's happy with, even if the rest of the organization and fan base and anyone that has any shred of likeness for the Marlins thinks it's a terrible idea. Um, but, I mean, Bell's going to be gone. Berger's going to be gone. I feel like just yeah, that's what you I'm... might even see some pitchers that are hurt that are gone. Yeah, with the mindsets that they come back for whatever team they get to, and they'll go give the Marlins three to five years, and if they don't have any type of a signs of success, everything was a failure. That team should move out of Florida, go anywhere in the world. <laughs> if I can, if I can comment on the 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 Rays uh, statement that you made, I think it's it comes down to ownership, and a lot of teams are not willing to follow through with what the Rays are doing which is winning with peanuts, essentially. Um, and with it, and you're left kind of with this whole aspect of, you know, okay, here's what we need to do to be good. We're going to – this is the formula. We need to follow the formula. Well, I don't want to do that. I, I, I'm all in for now, but, you know, as soon as I start seeing, you know, us in August of, the, of your first year – not producing uh in terms of this rebuild then you know it's i'm not i'm not interested in it so i think that's where a lot of former raise uh execs um front office uh personnel when they go to other organizations other teams that's where they struggle uh is because they try to implement the race system the owners ownership and executives don't want to do it or they change their mind because they realize oh this causes us to lose money so there's a, almost an abandonment of a rebuild because going through a rebuild is tough no oh, yeah a fan base an organization it's tough you know it, you're going to be shredded in the media for a couple years you know in a lot of cases there's no guarantee it'll work either so you have you, there's also that factor of it too so you have to be committed and honestly it, it, when it comes to the marlins We've seen this year after year after year. They'll, you know, somehow luck their way into the postseason. Maybe in the case of 2003 or in case of uh, 1997, where they luck their way to a World Series, but then they immediately tear it down. Mm. This is the Marlins playbook. I, I, you know, you're right with the whole, like, rebuilding, like, doesn't always pan out. I mean, hell, the fucking Pirates have been rebuilding for 45 years, but... You know, I, I just I I I just really question this because Luisa Rice, he's only twenty seven. Um, you know, like I guess my question is, do they really think that last year was so much of a flash in in the pan that you are willing to like rebuild off of this? Because again, like if you're going to trade a rise, then I feel like. Chisholm is definitely the next next candidate to go because he's at a similar age. I know they think he's kind of the, you know, face of their franchise, but um, he doesn't produce like a rise at all. And, you know, obviously he brings something to the team, but it's just like, why I like, will like why I know we, we know pitching was really good for them last year, but you know, why was last year so good for them? And, and, you know, was that again just kind of a lucky thing? Where now it's like, okay, we're really seeing who the true Marlins are. No, if anything, the true Marlins are probably closer to what it was last year, at least not until the trade. They have a lot of really good, young-looking starting pitching. In fact, last year they did as well as they did, and Sandy Alcantara was not his best self for yeah. probably three quarters of the season, and then the, at the end of it, he got shut down because of Tommy John. That's the Marlins team that everyone was thinking that they were going to turn into. It's just that they were starting to finally, at the trade deadline last year, add some bats to complement the pitching. Was it a ton offensively? No, but they were making the right steps. So you thought that maybe then this year they were going to do more. The pitchers also aren't necessarily like, at least most of them, I'm going to say. But I think what... um Perez is now under Tommy John. Yeah. yeah. Having Tommy John surgery, so he's going to be out till mid late next year. Um, Alcantara would be back at the beginning of next year. Lazardo's injury right now is just, what, shoulder inflammation or something? Yeah. But you don't um, know with that, I guess. <laughs> but 
But still, you would think that most of the injury situation, because you also had probably five or six guys in a rotation that you were confident, or you would not, shouldn't say confident, but felt pretty good that they could help round out your staff that, all right, unfortunately this year might be a wash year because of those injuries, and there's just way too many to overcome. You really just need depth to get you through the season. But next year, you would have thought, hey, with that pitching staff back, there's no reason to think we can't perform. So I I feel like just following their trendy history is they're just bailing on the team way too quickly. Yeah. And this so is a Marlins just, thing. Yeah. They did it with Miguel Cabrera. Well, that's what they said. It's they, a historical they it thing. It, yeah. They're just bailing too quickly. That's the problem. So it's, it's not going to end anytime soon, I, I feel like. And it just – it's it's frustrating. This kind of reminds me. This reminds me of when they traded Stanton. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, it, it it that that's immediately what comes to my mind because everybody at the time was like, "What are they doing? They have the MVP of the league. What are they doing? This guy is going to absolutely rake for them. Why are they getting rid of him? Pay him." And they didn't do it. They sent him to well, the Yankees paid him and then traded him. Yeah. <laughs> right. But no, they I just paid about... him. But it, uh, Mark Burley was it? Mark Burley, Jose Reyes, and there was another pretty big bat. Yeah, I know. I'm trying in, to like 2012. Yeah, it was like a really bold off season for them, where they signed very good veterans at that time to help kind of lead a young core. And it looked like the team was going to go into the direction of, hey, in the next couple of years, we'll be contenders. We'll have good balance of of uh, veteran talent and young talent. Team didn't do well the first year, and they traded like everyone to the Blue Jays. Yeah, and it was like, well, we tried for one year, that didn't work. But that, that's Start what over. I was. That's what I was gonna say. Like, it's almost like they don't know how to build around good players because it's like, now that I really think about it, it's like, okay, Stanton, Yelich, like these these were like superstar players for them, and it's like Hanley Ramirez, Dan Ugla in the late two thousand. <laughs> Dan Josh Ugla, Johnson, what a pull, Miguel Cabrera. <laughs> Like it, right, it, before that, Cabrera. It, it's almost like okay, well, it's not working out, so you know we suck. So let's trade our best player because we can get the most value out of them. We can get these prospects, and they they'll pan out for us. And like that's the thing. I feel like maybe they bank too much on potential, and and you know you have to have these these good players to build around. And for a rise, like I don't I don't know why I thought he was in his thirties. Like he's only twenty seven, and. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, he he's a good player. Um, he's he actually started the year off very poorly, and he's still batting three over three hundred now. So like, mm -hmm. I mean, again, he's one of the best bat to ball hitters in the league, and it's just like, all right, it's not working out. We're it's over. Like, dude, your whole starting pitching staff has been hurt this year, man. Like, what happens next year when you have if you had a rise, you have your pitching staff healthy. You add some pieces in the offseason and actually spend money. It's just like they're just so quick to be like, nope, this is not working. See you later. <laughs> like, it, it is I swear the wild. Tampa Bay Rays just created their uh, method of making dominant teams by watching the Marlins suck at what they do for the <laughs> entire, like, 2000s. Because the Marlins don't – they dump, it seems, everyone and restart, and then it doesn't immediately work one year. And they're like, well, instead of, like, how we can say, of course – how we see the Rays now, but the Rays will have when players reach certain points where they start to get too expensive and they're kind yeah. of in their like peak young ages, they'll trade them off, get the young guys to then rebuild the system again. Because we can keep saying like the Marlins don't know what to do, but one thing that it is true with the Marlins, they do seem to collect good young talent and build it up. Like we said, they had Miguel Cabrera. <laughs> Traded them off. You had Hanley Ramirez. You had Dan Ugly. You had Josh Johnson. You traded at least two of those off. Josh Johnson just kind of got hurt and whatever. Don't forget Dontrell Willis, too, back in the <laughs> Cabrera time. As an elite pitcher for them, goes to Detroit and was just like, oh, I don't know how to pitch anymore. Um, and then you look at the team nowadays. They know what to do talent-wise and, like, building it up. It's just something doesn't work. All right, we need to prepare for the future. And apparently that solution is – we need to trade away all the potential players now yeah. instead of let's have that balance of here's the people that are really good now. Here's the young people that can then work up into them. And then here's the like couple veterans that we have to bring in on one year deals to round out a team. 
Yeah. They're just like, here's this group. Does this group work? Nope, dump them. Here's 26 <laughs> new guys. Does this work? Nope, let's try again. It, it's almost like if the player is over, like, 26 or 27, and they're not, like, an absolute superstar, superstar they're like, let's get as much value as we can out of them and, and trade them because we'll, we'll bank on getting four prospects back who – could be better than him one day, but it's like now you're looking Wait a minute, three, that, four years down the line. That logic doesn't apply. What about Stanton? No, but <laughs> yeah. I'm saying like uh, he, he's, got, he's a superstar for us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, let's pay him. Oh, he's expensive. Yeah. I mean, y- you right, we'll eat the contract. Here you go, Yankees. You are right about that in a sense. It's just like I don't know, man. It just feels like they don't know how to build teams, and uh, I think they just pulled the crazy. plug too soon. Yeah, I, I think honestly, the, if the moral of the story I think is that, and I think um, we, I th- in our preseason predictions, I think we all had them taking a step back, but we had them around like seventy. I want to say like seventy-five wins and above, still maybe or around that. Yeah, and I had them like seventy. Yeah, oh, really? Okay. I, I forget what I had them at, but I know I had them. Uh, I think I had them ahead of the Nationals. Yeah, but That's I mean, what I had too. But you know, it's may 9th and there are 16 and a half games that are first place in the division like it's just it's absolutely wild but uh with that we will wrap this one up here and to all those marlins fans that john says are non-existent we are sorry for you uh this is not fair you had hope for one year and if let you me go tell to the you ballpark marlins fans you <laughs> might be able to keep your players <laughs> that too just but like to the beach you're in florida don't go to a baseball <laughs> there's game. so many better so many you know great things to do in florida going to a marlins game in probably miami isn't beach. there Ooh. yeah going to a club in miami uh doing cocaine in miami <laughs> you know anything in miami <laughs> watching a marlins game no <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know I, it's it's a Monday afternoon. I'm bored. Yeah, you know. Uh, you know, this is the one time where I'd say you're probably throwing away your more money going to a Marlins game than going to a casino. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. With that, let's wrap it up there. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we will see you next time as we get back into our show. But wanted to do a quick video on this big trade. But until next time, we will see you later.